Hey, what's up everybody? I wanted to share this video because I find it interesting. Now these are a uh, shipment of green spotted puffers that we just got in. And now you might've seen these in your local fish store and they sell them as uh, freshwater fish when in actuality, they're more of a brackish water to full saltwater fish. They really need that salt. And as they become mature, they'll need that salt even more. Um, but we find they make a great uh, addition to saltwater tanks and not just fish only systems, but reef uh, systems as well. So in this video, I'm gonna take you guys out to a couple of tanks with corals in them where we have these green spotted puffers and just show you why I think they make a good addition to a reef tank. So I just wanted to share with you guys my final project here. We have a puffer in a reef tank. See, he's eating some bloodworms right now. And there's a damsel. We have a real grandma right here that's eating some of the bloodworms. And we have some clownfish. But so far, so good. Uh, he's been in here for about uh, two weeks. He hasn't touched any of the coral, so here's a hammer coral. You feel your coral there, you got a hammer coral there. Um, it's a pretty simple setup, it's just Kenya trees, soft corals, and some uh, hammer corals, nothing crazy. Uh, there's obviously some snails, Mexican turbo, uh, right there, Astrea snails. And there was an urchin in here, but I took him out because he was getting too big. But he, the puffer hasn't messed with the snails. Really, they can't bite through the shells of the snails. It's just, it's too hard for them to do. Um, he hasn't messed with any of the fish. There's a damsel right there. And like I said, uh, he's pretty much been chill with the fish. Um, so far, so good. So the funny thing is these clowns are very aggressive and they're very protective of their uh, anemone over here. But the puffer is able to kind of swim through this area and they don't really attack them or, or stress them out too much. And the clowns are, uh, are tough enough to where the puffer's not gonna mess with them or try to go after them. And same thing with the, with the royal grandma. You know, they can defend themselves and you, we all know how damsels are. But everybody's cohabitating pretty well. And I'm gonna add some more fish in here pretty soon. He's eating well. Uh, he's got some normal behavior, he seems to be happy in here. He's really paying no mind to the corals, which is awesome. So like I said, it's a simple setup, just some leathers, some hammer corals. Some zoas. We're gonna add some more stuff in here, but I've had these puffers in with all types of stuff and they never seem to be bothered by it. So it's good news. So I've had a puffer in my tank. I had one in there for about three years. Did great, had all types of corals in the tank, never messed with the corals. Never was a problem with any of the fish in there, never attacked them. Um, was, a, was a really good fish, uh, really worked out for me well. Unfortunately, uh, it jumped, it got spooked, and it jumped out of the tank, and I wasn't able to uh, catch it in time and ended up dying. So I have another one in the tank that I wanted to show you guys as well. So we'll go ahead and click to that. So here we are at another customer's tank. And as you can see, this tank has a lot more corals in it, uh, a lot more variety uh, for sure. Uh, you have anything from you know you know more hammer hammer corals, different types of frog spawns, a bunch of different euphelias, but we also have some things like uh, uh, Cynarina right there. You see, there's some blastos. We got Monopora. We got Duncan corals and uh, Scullies. We have a bunch of variety Favias, uh, uh, Acans, a bunch of different varieties of corals. So you have a, a a wide selection that the puffer would have an opportunity to kind of go after. Right here, you have a nice little zoa garden. And there's even a plate coral, another huge sign arena. Uh, and he hasn't touched any of them, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to say. So far, so good. And we've had him in this tank now for about a, a solid uh, two weeks. And we haven't seen any uh, nipping, uh, any behavior that would make us think that the corals are stressed out or he's going after the corals. And uh, there's been no issues with the fish that are in here. Now, some of the fish that we have in here are a, uh, some clowns. We have uh, some Bangar cardinals, a couple of tangs. Uh, the most aggressive fish in this tank is a two-spotted hogfish, which was the bully of the tank. Uh, went after the, the puffer a little bit, but not crazy amount. Uh, they seem to be getting along right now, and the puffer is not going after anybody. Everybody seems to be getting along just fine, I'm excited to say. So uh, this is this feels really good. Now we're only two weeks in and a lot can change, but as of right now, things are, are looking up and I'm excited. Uh, we got, like I said, we have some trackies, we have uh, uh, Singulara corals in here, leather corals, toadstool. We have a, such a huge variety of corals in here and we don't see any type of bite marks or any type of stress marks that would lead us to believe that the puffer is 
uh, you know, going after them in any way. So one of the reasons why we chose the green spotted puffer to put into or to try to put into reef tanks and experiment with is because this is a fish that is a freshwater fish at first. So you, once you ad, uh, acclimate it to a saltwater uh, reef tank or saltwater tank, you can get rid of a lot of those freshwater pests through the, uh, you know, that transition from fresh to salt. A lot of those pests and parasites can't survive that transition from fresh to salt. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, the other uh, part of it is, you know, where they're from and where they are located, corals aren't in their natural habitat. So corals are foreign to them and they don't see them as a food source. They don't see them as something to eat. So that's another reason why we thought that we would go ahead and give it a shot, uh, putting trying these green spotted puffers in reef tanks. Now, like I said, I did this in my tank and um, was successful and kind of was uh, experimenting with that. And then, so this is something we've been working on for a while and uh, we are really excited because a lot of people, people want to have puffers uh, but they also want the corals too. So could this be something that is best of both worlds? Uh, this is an experiment that we're willing to try and willing to you know, see how it plays out. But as of yet, it seems to be working out pretty good. Now I know, you know a lot of people have green spotted puffers and they'll feed them things like guppies and small little fish and they are known to nip at fins. But I, I, one thing I've noticed with these green spotted puffers as they get older, they don't tend to do that behavior as much. Um, also saltwater fish are a lot tougher than a lot of those, you know, than a guppy and they can defend themselves a lot better. Um, again, every fish has its own personality. Every puffer is going to have its own personality. So you might want to test that as you're acclimating that, put in, put a molly or something in there to, as you're, uh, before you put them in your tank. Uh, but every tank that we've put them in a uh, reef tank or saltwater tank with, uh, things like clownfish and, and, and royal grandmas and things like that. They've never gone after them. They've never eaten them. And if anybody who's had a uh, saltwater tank and has kept saltwater fish like tangs and things knows that a puffer is not going to be able to really do anything to that, a fish like that. Saltwater fish are pretty, pretty aggressive uh, fish. So we're still kind of in the early stages of this, but we're seeing some success and uh, just wanted to kind of report on our progress and, and, and what we're going through. But like you can, like, as you can see here, I mean, you got a beautiful Duncan coral there. You have some frog spawns. You have a bunch of different coral there. And so far, he has definitely not gone, gone after the coral. And if you put the right mix of fish with this green spotted puffer, uh, I, I feel confident that both the puffer and the saltwater fish that you choose will be fine. Uh, I, I'm pretty confident to say that. So what I'm gonna do is stop off here and we'll go ahead and I'll take some more footage down the road when I, whenever I get a chance and I'll edit into this and I'll give you guys a bit of an update on how the puffer is doing uh, in the tank. There's my buddy. So this is a quick update. He's still doing great. This is about three, four months after we initially put him in here, but you can see he's got great weight on him. His color's awesome. He's happy and now the lights were off. I just turned them on, but all the coral are still doing great. He hasn't touched any of the coral. Everybody's fine. All the coral are fine. So this was uh, so far a success and he's getting along with all the other fish. You can see a bang out of cardinal back there. They were kind of chilling together before I woke him up with the lights. And there is a uh, two-spot hogfish in here that's pretty aggressive. Somewhere around here, back there in the back. And right there, there's a two-spot hogfish. That is a pretty aggressive fish. It was very territorial in this tank. They couldn't get any fish in this tank because that two-spot hog would go after them. But uh, the puffer's uh, done pretty good. He hasn't seen the puffer as a threat. So that's good news. So it's been like about three or four months this fish has been here. Like I said, it's got some good size on him, looks healthy. So, so far, it's, uh, having this green spotted puffer in this reef tank has been a, a good success. All right, thank you guys so much for watching.